397, what a friend we have in Jesus. Sing the first and third verse after we pray. 397. All right, let's spend a few minutes praying for these requests and praying for the lesson. God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the chance to study your word here in a few minutes. And uh, we thank you for the good group here. I pray that you just give us a good, good time of study. And uh, we'll encourage our hearts as we finish up the book of Daniel. And uh, Lord, may it help us to understand that Lord, at any moment, uh, Lord, we're expecting the Antichrist to begin his reign. And Lord, seven years of his reign before Lord, it becomes eternity with you. Father God, I pray that we'll prepare for it, we'll be ready, and Lord, we'll do our part to help other people be prepared as well. Father, we just thank you so much for answered prayers. Thank you for taking care of Cindy this week and giving her safety as she traveled. Thank you for uh, allowing us to give out all those gifts last week to the children and their families. And uh, Lord, just thank you for a good Christmas, celebrating the birth of Jesus. Help us to not forget that uh, Jesus is the reason to celebrate every season and every single day of our life to praise the Lord for all he's done. We'll just bless these requests this morning, praying for Joe and for Bonnie today, that you just strengthen and uh, lift them up this morning. He's asked us to continue to pray for his health. Uh, Darren, for his procedure this week, that you just get him through it and we'll help him have a fast recovery. And with Tisha, for her unspoken request. She's asked us also to pray for her uh, friend Susan Staggs and Sarah Blankenheim. Uh, we'll also just continue to watch over... Uh, Vida for her shoulder and wrist for healing quickly. And uh, Lord, for her son Keith. Sandy, Father, added for Greg, Chuck, and Richard to be saved. And Lord, think of Cindy has asked us to pray for her, uh, for Dave, for his teeth procedure this week. And continue to be with Marissa, Rosie, and Brittany. And at least those mentioned these Armenian believers, uh, Lord, that are being persecuted, starved. And God, I pray that you would just work and intervene in your mighty hand upon them. Father, Lord, you promised that. Lord, your children would not go hungry. I pray that you provide for them in a mighty way. Lord, just bless these requests. Bless this time this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. All righty. 397, what a friend we have in Jesus. 397. Sunday and just look at each chapter. Hopefully we'll finish it up. Uh, but uh, it's so important that we go back and remember all that we've learned. It took all of last year to get through the book of Daniel. And I hope that was an encouragement to you. I know it was an encouragement for me to study it and to learn it. And then we're going to start our study in the book of 
James, I don't know who it was that recommended that study, but I'm just going to tell you, I don't know that you're ready for it. Okay. Charity and I both have been reading through the book of James this week. And let me just tell you, it is going to be tough. You're going to get your, your booties kicked. Okay. But uh, listen, I hope and pray that you won't be offended. This isn't what Pastor Cody has to say. This is what God has to say to the church. And uh, it's going to be a difficult study because uh, we're going to take each one of those lessons and take a week on each one of those lessons. And uh, once again, some of you aren't going to want to come to Sunday school because you're afraid of what you're going to hear. Uh, but listen, the Spirit of God is going to say, no, you need this. You need this. Okay? I need this. We all need it. And so I pray that in 2024, as we open the book of James and we go lesson by lesson through this book, uh, that you will allow the Spirit of God to say, this is what Jesus wants me to be. This is who Jesus was. That's what he lived like. Okay? The phrase, I think the theme for the book of James is like Christ. All right? And that's really what a Christian is. A Christian is someone who is like Christ. A Christian is not a believer. Okay? A Christian is the phrase of someone who is like Jesus. And so uh, I hope and pray that you'll be prepared, put on your big boy britches, uh, because it's going to be a difficult study. And you're, I'm going to get, I'm going to get some whoopings from Jesus, and you're going to get some whoopings from Jesus as we study this book. Uh, but listen, we understand that it's needful and it's helpful for us, as as the book of James says, who looks at the word of God and sees who they are and forgets it. And goes about their day just living like, hey, it's no big deal. You know, that's shameful. Lisa, you want to say something? Yeah, and I encourage everybody uh, to encourage everybody to read the book of James, a letter over and over. It's like 104 verses, I can't remember, but it's real close to that. Just continue reading it until the book is over. And God will use him to open up this text before you. If everybody would take the time to open the book up throughout the week. I was reading it I think... before you were born. <laughs> <laughs> I think, Listo, I, I, Listo, I think that you reading it would be 100,000 times more effective than me getting up here and speaking, okay? Uh, just me reading it this week was like yeah. heavy just to think about some of the things that are said. And so, listen, read it at your own pace. Take some time, uh, like I said, every day and just take one lesson and ask God to help you work on that lesson. And if, if you just get through the first chapter and you're like, hey, I believe I have these things down, uh, that's revival. That's revival. So anyway, that's a few weeks. I'm excited about it. All right. But uh, I hope you'll be praying about it as excited as well. And as, take least those advice. Just read it yourself. And uh, if you can't make it every Sunday, if you're reading it, I know that you will be uh, blessed from it. So into our study, last two chapters of Daniel, chapters 11 and 12, the time of the end and even beyond. And so we've said these are the most important chapters of Scripture as because this prophecy, if it is truly prophecy, which we believe it is, then the Bible cannot be refuted as God's Word. And so you come across somebody who says, I don't believe this book, you show them Daniel chapter 11, and you said, if Daniel can predict every last bit of that and it happened just like it happened, then this book is true, and I'm going to put my life to it, and I would encourage you to as well. All right, so Daniel in these chapters are given a more filled out timeline. Uh, this is the vision from Daniel chapter 2 that he was given. But in Daniel chapter 11, it tells us who these leaders are, and then it all the way gets even into Rome. All right, and then now we're in this, the divided kingdom, today. And so the Bible says that in chapter 12 that there's going to come up from... The Roman Empire, a leader that's going to be the Antichrist. In that time, Michael shall stand up. And uh, there shall be a time of great trouble since there was a nation from that time before. And so three and a half years of great trouble. We studied that a few weeks ago. Last week, we looked at these verses, 12, verses 2 and 3. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, some to shame and everlasting contempt. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. 
and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. And as I'm going to say this morning in this service, there are those that are saved, and there are those that are lost. There are those that are shining as the brightness of the sun in the eternity, and there are those that are going to be suffering. All right? Two paths. The Bible is very clear. There's not a middle ground. There's not a gray area. It is there's the narrow road that leads to Christ, the broad low road that leads to Satan. And then we read in Matthew, the sheep and the goats, Matthew 24, 25, 31 through 46, how God's going to divide the sheep that are his followers, that are faithful believers of him, and they're going to get to go into heaven, paradise, and then he's going to take the goats. He's going to cast them into hell forever. And so that was our study. Today, we're going to finish up the cha chapter of Daniel 12, and I've got 15 minutes to do it, so bear with me. And if we don't get through it, it's okay. Uh, but Daniel chapter 12, verses 4 through 13, is our study this morning, finishing up chapter 12. It says, But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book, even the time of the end. Many shall run unto, fro, and knowledge shall be increased. Then I, Daniel, looked, and behold, there stood other two, one on this side of the bank of the river, and the other on that side of the bank of the river. And one said to the man clothed in linen, which was upon the waters of the river, How long shall it be to the end of these wonders? And I heard the man clothed in linen, which was upon the waters of the river, when he yelled up his right hand, his left hand to heaven, and swear by them, that liveth forever. Then it shall be for a time, and a times, and a half. And when he shall be accomplished to scatter the people, all these things shall be finished. I have heard, I understand not, then said, O oh, my Lord, what shall the end of these things? And he said, Go thy way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed till the time to the end. Many shall be purified, and made white, and tried, but the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand. And Tisha, I know that you love the idea of world peace, but this is, this is the idea, the understanding, the reality. This is Bible, okay? There's going to be those many, many are going to be purified. That's, that's the one I like to understand. But there's also going to be what? The wicked. There's never going to be a time where everybody on this earth are going to be saved. And therefore, there's never going to be world peace because sin and evil and unrighteousness are going to abound. But the wicked shall be wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. And from that time the daily sacrifice shall be taken away, and the abomination that maketh desolate set up, there shall be a thousand two hundred and ninety days, three and a half years. Blessed is he that waiteth and cometh to the thousand three hundred five and thirty days, a little over two and a half years. But go thou way to the end, for thou shalt rest, thou shalt die, Daniel, and stand in thy lot at the end of days. And so a lot here to explain, and so let me get to explaining it. The very first thing Daniel is told here is to seal up this vision. Uh, he didn't keep it a very good secret. He wrote it down. Uh, but basically God is saying, hey, look, I have more information. There's more for me to tell, uh, but I'm going to seal it up. I'm going to keep it a secret. And so there are things that Daniel was told that he did not reveal. And I think that that's the time that we're in now. I think Daniel was given a vision of every leader and every nation. Uh, but God said, I want you to seal that up and put it away. And so we understand God knows exactly how it's going to end, when it's going to end, and how it's going to happen. He showed it to Daniel, and we can trust. The next one he says here is that wisdom shall increase. And we would never have imagined how much wisdom has increased. Uh, those of you, Miss Janine, those of you that have been around for a while, Miss Jana, uh, you can understand how fast wisdom has increased in just the last 50 years. All right? Uh, to the point, even in my time, you know, when I was born, I was born in 1985. Um, if I had to know something, I had to go to an encyclopedia to look it up. Okay? Anybody remember encyclopedias? Right? Anybody, anybody before encyclopedias? Think about it. There was a time and a date where there was no such thing as an encyclopedia. So if you just wanted to know something, you just had to just be like, I don't know. You know, <laughs> praise God for those parents, right? Yeah. You know, wouldn't it be great? You know, hey, wh what, what is uh, the capital of so-and-so? I have no idea. It's a, no idea. Literally, I don't know. You know. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. Now it's like, well, what's the capital of so-and-so? I don't know. Well, then they have to Google it. Well, it's so-and-so. Let me tell you how, you know. Uh, listen, wisdom has increased. We understand Google and uh, Microsoft and Apple and uh, all these things have increased wisdom. And so, listen, this is a sign of the end. As wisdom increases, 
It says there's going to be a time and a times and a half. All right? That's a time, one year, times, two years, and a half. So three and a half years. We're going to see that repeated again. All right? Scattering the power of Israel is what Daniel says is going to happen. Once God has scattered the power of Israel, why would God need to scatter the power of Israel? Well, why would he need to basically make it to a waste? Why? Because he's going to start over, isn't he? Right? He is going to basically take every last bit of strength that Israel has left. They're going to be scattered, the Bible says. Jesus says, go to the hillside. They're going to have no, no land, no leaders. They're just going to be spread out. And then guess what? Jesus is going to come. And he's going to give them a land. And he's going to be their leader. Uh, but he's going to come to the end of the nation of Israel. All right? And listen, folks, that's where we need to be as Americans. Amen? Yes. We, we need to let God have control of our land. Yes. And to put our faith and trust in him. Not in man. All right? But in our trust in the Lord. And let him be our leader of our nation and the leader of our lives. Uh, because we are sheep scattered. And we are going to be until we allow Jesus to be our Lord and our leader. All right. Many shall be purified. I, I love that. Okay. Those people who like to think that, uh, you know, it's just going to get worse and worse and worse and worse. This to me says many are going to be saved in, in, in the tribulation, in the last days. This is my desire. I, I'm an optimist. I like the idea of revival. Many are going to be purified. But the wicked shall do wickedly and not understand. Okay? They're going to understand with their head, but they're not going to be able to understand with their heart. And uh, they're not going to want to understand. They're going to want to continue to live in darkness. We saw the numbers of the years, that there's going to be three and a half years of peace. And then he says there's going to be three and a half years of persecution. But then blessings come. There's going to be 300 years from the time of the, the uh, end of offerings to the desolation, and then another three and a half years, and then at the end of that three and a half years is going to come the blessings of the Lord. Blessed is he that waited for, uh, I, didn't, I should have written those numbers down in my notes. You have them in front of you. You have the Bible open there. Uh, blessings come after that, and then Daniel shall die, but that's not the end of Daniel. Okay, Daniel will stand in his lot. He will have an inheritance in the end of days. There will be a day coming, folks, that it will be the end of days. We'll stop having a calendar. Uh, my wife and I sat down this week in 2024, and we planned out our vacation, and we planned out our trips, and we planned out, you know, different things we're excited about happening in this year. But listen, in this year, it could begin the tribulation, and we could stop counting days, and our days would be just filled with Jesus. <laughs> Amen? Amen. And as much as I look forward to having fun things this year, uh, listen, I look forward to being with Jesus for, etern for eternity. And uh, as Daniel, okay, as Daniel is going to have a special place in heaven, so are those of us that have served God faithfully. There's going to be a special place for you. Just as Daniel's going to have a special place, there's going to be a special place for those of us that have served him faithfully with our lives. And that's why I have... At, uh, 16 years old, gave my life to God and gave my life on this earth to him to serve him. And I believe that as I faithfully serve God day in and day out, year in and year out, that God's going to reward me in the end for eternity with a special place, a special authority in his kingdom. And my prayer is that you guys would be less concerned about your position on this earth and more concerned about your position for eternity. And so lastly, before we finish up, let's apply these verses into our lives. The application was Daniel was right about every single prophecy in chapter 11. So we can trust his prophecy in chapter 12. Chapter 11, he went through all of those leaders and everything that was going to happen. It happened. Chapter 12 begins what we call the end times, tribulation. And we know that the Antichrist is next. He's coming. It's going to come a time when the Antichrist is going to come out, out of the nation of Rome, which could be just about anywhere as Roman influence spread throughout the entire world just about. Okay. 
So we know that he's going to come out of those nations and he's going to promise peace and prosperity and the world is going to come together like it's never have. But we understand they're coming against Israel and they're coming against those who won't bow down to Satan. And they will, those that will not receive the mark of the beast, uh, they will be persecuted. Uh, the Jews will be persecuted. It'll be a great time for the wicked, but God's going to bring the end of the Antichrist, those last three and a half years. And so may we determine from this, all right, Thessalonians, I got to read this quickly and, and get through the last two points. First Thessalonians, this is, but ye brethren are not in darkness. That the day should overtake you as a thief. We're not in darkness. We have understanding that the day of the Antichrist is coming. So this is the, the challenge to the church there in Thessalonica. Ye are the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Let us therefore not sleep as others do, but let us watch and be sober. This is going to be our theme verse next year. Alive in 2025. Mm -hmm. All right. That's going to be our verse next year. 2025. Alive in 2025. For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and a helmet of salvation. For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we shall live together with him. Wherefore, comfort together yourselves, even as ye do. So from this, determine today. We know the Antichrist is coming. We could be discouraged and down and oppressed about it, or we could... Hey, number one, be purified. Make sure that we're saved through the blood so that we can overcome. All right? Donnie's teaching us a new song this morning. It's called Overcome. And it's a beautiful song. But understand, we only overcome through Jesus. Number two, determine to do more good and less wickedness. All right? Our theme for 2024, love more in 2024. That means do more good. Okay? Do more determined that I'm going to do more for God and less for myself. More for the spirit, less for the flesh. Determine today to encourage others to follow your example. Okay, that last phrase there, he says, listen, comfort and edify one another. That means we build up each other. We encourage, we, we, we lead the example so that other people can follow us, okay? When one falls, we're there to what? Encourage them. If two fall, if we have a good group of our, our church family, we can lift them up. But folks, if we all fall and we all just give up there's no hope we have to encourage to continue to live to carry my own weight and determine i'm going to help carry someone else as well i'm going to encourage them to love god more to be faithful to him and to his people and may we do our part this year to do more good to love more in 2024 and what a wonderful encouragement daniel has been and so next week we'll come back and just go through each of the chapters and the lessons we've learned from daniel chapter 12 and then next week, then two weeks from now, we'll be starting the book of James. So let's pray. Ask God to give us a great rest of our morning. God, thank you for this day. Lord, we thank you for the chance to study your word. Uh, Lord, I just pray that you'll take this um, last chapter, Daniel chapter 12. And Lord, may it not make us depressed. May it not make us think that things are dark. But may it encourage us to understand that many will come to know God. May it help us understand that we do our part to be the examples to the world. Uh, Lord, as we're going to sing here in just a few minutes, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. May we shine our lights, uh, Lord, all throughout our lives so that others might understand and might come to know Christ. That we, Lord, as a church, would determine to reflect God's love, reflect his light to the world. Give us the strength to do more. Lord, may we see revival in our hearts. May we see revival in our town. May Lord, we even see revival in our world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Yeah, yeah. That's the truth.